Rich DeMillo is the director of the Center for 21st Century Universities at Georgia Tech. Prior to that, he was the dean of the College of Computing. And before that, he was a chief technology officer for Hewlett Packard. He's been successful and visionary in both academia and in industry, and currently studies the issues about the future of higher education in the United States as well as worldwide. Rich, it's been almost five years since your book, Abelard to Apple. Tell me about what changes you've seen from that point in time that you might not have expected. Yeah, so, um, you know, you're never completely accurate when you make these kinds of forecasts. Yeah. And, and I think the, the main thing I, I didn't anticipate uh, was the, the pace of change. Uh, I, I really thought I was talking about a generational, a generational shift. Uh, I had no idea how quickly open courseware uh, would, uh, would catch on. I had no idea that there would be a kind of MOOC beyond the MOOC I described uh, in the book that would attract hundreds of thousands, seven and a half million now if you look at Coursera, um, uh, that, that, that kind of, of learner population. Uh, I had no idea that the uh, that the research institutions would 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 kind of hone in on institutional change and structural change the way that they that they did um, the 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 trappings of of change the, the 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 technology itself the details of the technology were much less interesting to me than than what happened to the system system as a as a whole so so my surprise was. This happened not within my lifetime. This happened you know, in the space of three or four years. You talked about the dilemmas faced by the middle institutions. How do you see the middle institutions in this country faring? So, so there's this, this group of universities in what I call the, the, the middle. Uh, uh, you know, these, are, these are places um, that have, uh, may have been around for a long time, that, that, that have uh, a self-image and, and, and a brand uh, that, they're, that they're very fond of, uh, that, that think that, that they can just ignore what's going on, what's going on around them. Two-thirds of the presidents of those institutions uh, are either uh, living in a world with blinders uh, or, or they have convinced themselves that the story that they tell their entering freshmen, the dwindling population of entering freshmen, uh, is actually true. So there's there's two things going on. One one is that is that these are complex institutions navigating through complex times, uh, and so it's never clear uh, at a given decision point this is obviously the right the right thing to to do. That's why you hire the people that you that you have at a place like um, like Georgia Tech. But but that doesn't that doesn't excuse you from not looking at the big picture, uh, and, and and the economics of higher education. Uh, is just astoundingly clear as to what's going to what's going to happen. I, I had this conversation with Hennessy uh, uh, as I was preparing for the for the new book, and we talked about the inevitability of technology. And at some point in the conversation, he just stopped and he said, "You know, Rich, show me the industry that's been able to resist the rush of technology." And it's true. It's, it's true. There 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 is no human endeavor that's been able to resist technology. There's been much hype about MOOCs. Let's talk about that. I'm 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 very optimistic on on on, on MOOCs, and, and and I understand um, maybe more than anyone uh, who's involved in, um, uh, in in talking about higher education uh, what happens during during the hype cycle because I've lived through three hype cycles and led led companies through through three hype cycles. Um, there is nothing wrong with hype. Um, uh, hype, hype draws innovation. Hype draws investment. Hype draws activity. So I look at MOOCs and I say, well, we are just, you know, barely two years uh, uh, into this, and um, and 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 there are, um, conservatively speaking, a 10 million learners that have enrolled uh, in in MOOCs. Forget about the drop rates. From 10 million is a big number for any enterprise. Um, and, and, and who is it? Uh, it's 108 universities associated with Coursera, all of them struggling with the same problems that we see 
in, in, in MOOCs. How do you monetize it? How do you, uh, how do you make sure that, that students are getting value uh, out of it? There are universities that are seeing value in this, and, and, and we're just going to let it play out. Georgia Tech is going to let it, uh, let it play out. We have some ideas, we have some data about what it means for our students, what it means for our residential programs, but the disruptive nature of it really hasn't started to trickle down into structural changes within, within higher education. Um, that may take, you know, here's one of my generational predictions, that may take a generation or it may take two or three years. We'll have to find out.